Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling. We are going out to California for someone who made history in the United States for women's wrestling. Afsoon Johnston was the very first medalist at the World Championships, at the Women's Freestyle World Championships. And she has a great story, a book that just came out, uh, author Craig Sesser, you can see it there, called Appropriately Afsoon. It goes through um, you being born in Iran and then coming to the United States. And I appreciate you coming on to talk about this incredible story. Oh, thank you so much, Kyle, for having me. And I'm really, really excited um, about sharing this book and that it's finally turned into a book that I can, I can share with, um, with the readers. Um, you know, throughout my wrestling career, um, when people heard about my story, they would always approach me and say, oh, this really should be written in a book. This should be a book. And so it, it, it really feels fulfilling for me and, and really neat that it's now come to be and that that book is out and released and um, ready for the wrestling community and beyond. Well, it was released on your birthday. There again is the, the cover, Love the Shot. When you see that book come out and you have your story now in print, how does that feel? Uh, it definitely feels um, surreal. It was, it was, um, uh, it's hard to put in words, to be honest. It's just really, again, something that, um, kind of legitimizes things for me, right? Because when I first um, started wrestling and women's wrestling um, wasn't really even a thing, you know, people looked at it as maybe a sideshow or something that wasn't really, you know, women wrestling, what's that all about? Oh, they'll, they'll quit soon or this is a sideshow. And, and then, you know, to see it come to where it is now to where I mean, we still have a ways to go, but we've come a long ways. And, um, and now for, you know, my story with, how it all started for me and even before that you know what i used in iran um and then you know being an immigrant and coming to this wonderful country and then you know then loving the sport of wrestling and being in this country where you have that opportunity that um you know if you love this sport you can pursue it and 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 then but then it wasn't really a thing for women um and you know then having that get started to where I was able to go for a boys out for a boys high school team and wrestle and you know full circle to to then having a women's national team and being able to represent United States and compete internationally and then you know finally to coaching the Olympics um it's just been so cool that that whole journey is now in the book and and when I read through it myself it, it almost doesn't feel real to me so to see it in print it's just brought me so much um just excitement and joy and i'm just more than anything so happy to share it with everybody and um i think i told somebody this the first time i see a young female wrestler you little girl with my book in her hands reading it like i think i'm just going to break down in tears and tears of joy because that's really what i wanted like if this book gets a chance to motivate and inspire even one little girl, one young girl. Um, oh my goodness. That just, that's, that's total fulfillment for me. That's, that's what I would love out of this book. And um, I would love to get it in the hands of every young girl and actually not just girls. I think it's a good story that resonates with, you know, um, whether you're from, whether you're an immigrant into this country or whether you've had struggles throughout your life, whether, you know, you're a female wrestler or a male wrestler or, uh, you know, and I think we do need more wrestling stories and wrestling books into the general public. And so I'm hoping that this book will um, hit the school system. You know, we, I don't know if you're familiar with that book, I Am Malala. Um, my kids in, in junior high and in high school read that book. And so, you know, and it's a good inspirational story of a young, young girl that now every reader has picked up and it's, you know, transcended to the general population. And so I really hope that this book, um, not only just the wrestling community picks it up and enjoys it, but that hopefully we can bring a wrestling story into the mainstream and into the general population. Do you think there's opportunities to make this into film? <laughs> you know, I've been asked that question a lot. Um, I'll tell you something. When I was in high school, and this is early 80s, and, um, you know, back then you didn't see girls on boys' high school teams. And so it hit the media really 
<clears throat> um, big time because not only was I wrestling on a, on a boys high school team, but it was an Independence High School, which was a powerhouse of a wrestling program at the time, you know, had won state champions, had produced um, Olympians and, you know, top, top notch wrestlers, Eric Guerrero, Marco Sanchez, you know, Palominos. Um, so here I was, um, a girl wrestling on this powerhouse of a boys wrestling program. So it made a lot of news at the time. And so a movie company, a production company picked up the story and approached me while I was in high school. And they said, you know, this would make a great movie and we would like to turn it into a movie. And I thought, well, that's absolutely wonderful. And um, at the time they actually bought my story rights um, for a year. And it was really cool because I was here in high school and I had this movie production company that, you know, followed me through my high, talk about gaining instant popularity in high school, right? Like here's, you know, here I went from being that weird girl that wrestles on, on the boys wrestling team to like, oh wow, this, this, you know, girl that has this movie production company that's following her around high school. And so it was really, really cool. And they worked on it for a year and they put out a script. And the script was really, really good, but they had two problems at the time. Um, one, I was in high school and so they didn't know how to end the story. Do they make the story about, you know, a girl that's participating in a boy's sport? Um, and, you know, then that would be the target audience would be, you know, athletes and sports enthusiasts. Or do they focus on, on Iran and the immigration and what I went through, which then that's more like, I don't know if you remember, Not Without My Daughter with Sally Fields, that movie, or a movie like um, Argo, you know, where it, it focuses more on the politics and on Iran and those hardships and fleeing the country. And, and that's a whole different target audience, right? And so, um, but then how do we end the story? He, this girl's still wrestling, she's still in high school, and where is women's wrestling gonna, gonna even go? This was before, before even the first world championships. And so at the time, um, they didn't know how to end it, they had the script, and then the other big problem was finding funding and finding someone that was actually gonna invest in, into the, you know, turn it into a movie. And so the script kind of just sat there and a few other um, production companies and, and script writers came along the way and have written different versions of it. But the timing has never been right. And so honestly, Kyle, I really, really am like hoping and wishing that this um, book now um, will come across the desk of the, the the people the right people that would be interested in making it into a movie and how cool would that be and right now we have the perfect ending now right because look at how far women's wrestling did end up coming and the success with the olympics and and so i think they would have a a, a really good um just all around movie with good ending for it so we'll see there's a lot of scenes that could play out in the, if it's a movie that are just beyond belief in some ways let's go back to what you it was like in iran we have to scrap what we know now and go back to that time growing up in iran there's scenes of you had to see a, a guy up on a, a crane hanging and and just some horrifying images when you look back now what was it like growing up in that environment and what did it do to you at that time at a age where you're impressionable Right, right, right. You know, I was, um, I was a young girl, so I didn't know any different. I was, I was young and so I didn't really have anything to compare it to at the time. And so, um, you know, I remember, of course, being from a very loving family with my mom and dad, but living in that horrific environment um, that the country Iran was at the time. And, and like you mentioned, like, I remember that image just vividly. Like, I don't think once you've seen something like that, it will ever be erased from your memory. Um, I, but to me now I thought back and, and, and I'll tell you, I, I wondered what, was that really real? Did it, is that, was that just my imagination or did I really see that? And so in, in writing the book and, and, and when Craig was writing the book and I was talking to him about my stories, um, you know, I would tell him these stories and I almost 
doubted myself, you know, did I really see that? And did I, that really happen? Or was that my Im imagination? Because it was so horrific. So believe it or not, a few times I called up my mom right after I had interviewed with um, Craig Susker on whatever chapter. And I would call my mom and I, and I would tell my mom, mom, I remember the scene. Like, did I really see a man hanging from the crane as we drove by? And was that really what the streets of Iran were like? at the time and and my mom was able to tell me yeah unfortunately it is true and that did happen and you did see that and we were trying to distract you and we always tried to create a you know a loving positive environment around you despite what was going on you know in in the country and and what was going on surrounding me and so images like that even though i remember them vividly it almost seems like it had happened to someone else, you know, and that I can recall the story and I can tell you the story and I can see the image in my, in my mind, but it almost doesn't seem real. Um, it seems like it had happened to somebody else and I was just there to kind of, to see what happened. So it, it's weird. I don't know if that's just a form of disassociation, disassociation because it was so, so horrific and tragic, but, um, you know, there are definitely a lot of scenes that I remember very, very vividly. And, 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 you know, I lived through not just the revolution, but wartime. And so I remember a lot of like just graphic things from the war and being exposed to, I think, things that really no six, seven, eight, nine year old girl should ever, any person should be exposed to. So it was some, some, some tough times, some horrendous times. And there's a scene of you stomping on the flag. It was part of what you had to do every day was stomp on the American flag. How did you not compartmentalize that and take it as reality that the United States wasn't as bad as they were making it out to be? Yeah, exactly. I didn't know any different, right? So at school, I thought United States, the great big Satan, the devil, and everything that they had filled our brains with, right? And then I would go home. And my parents would be telling me the exact opposite. You know, my parents would tell me, no, it, you know, I would come home and I would imagine literally streets of gold in the United States, like land of opportunity. My parents would tell me stories of what America would be like and America is like, and you know, the outside world is like, and that life is not just what you see what it is right now in Iran and that there is a better life and there's different ways. And, this is hatred and don't believe this F soon. And so it was hard for me as a six, seven year old to process that because I went to school and they taught me one thing and they taught, taught me to hate and taught me to, to really United States and Americans, the, 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 the Satan, the evil, and they need to be killed. And by killing them, I, I, I get a free pass to heaven. You know, I'm, I'm being filled with these, th this propaganda. And then I come home and my parents tell me the exact opposite. And so, you know, I think it's because of those reasons also that my parents didn't want to raise their only child, especially a girl in that kind of environment with those kinds of beliefs because they knew better. My parents had been educated. My, my father had been educated in Europe. So he, he knew different. And, um, and so, yeah, luckily they, they, they risked everything and sacrificed a lot to get me out of that environment. And I think that's why I really took advantage of the opportunities here in the United States, because my parents had always told me like, this is the land of opportunity and wait till we get there. You can, you can be whoever you want. You can make whatever of your life that you want. There's freedoms. You can take advantage and follow your dreams. So that's been a big thing of mine, you know, follow your dreams. And those dreams that I had at, you know, six, seven, and eight years old living in that condition in Iran, um, I wasn't sure if that dream would ever be a reality. And then once I was able to experience that in the United States and know that I wasn't going to be stoned to death because of a belief or because of a passion or because I loved wrestling and wanted to follow my dreams. Um, you know, I was able to do that. And, and like I said, this great country 
allows for that. And so, yeah, absolutely. We need to take advantage of that and follow those opportunities and follow our dreams. And if you read the book, it sounds like you were the perfect child. I don't know if a family <laughs> loved their child any more than they loved you. Like they wanted a boy and they were all in with one child and they saw you and they said, this is it. This is perfect. Oh, my parents are really wonderful and I am blessed. And that's why, you know, my parents are really my heroes. And, uh, you know, again, I look back now being, you know, um, in my forties myself now, and I look back at what my parents, um, did to how much sacrifice and what they had to, um, you know, really endure to provide this, this future for their only child. So, so I'm glad they think so highly of me, but honestly, I think, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a product of what, you know, what their upbringing and their parenting and, um, my parents are really my heroes. They're, they're wonderful people. Probably hard for us to compartmentalize what it was like in Iran, but if we're wrestling people and we know about wrestling tournaments, we can understand that there's a certain way wrestling tournaments are run. And let's go back to 1989, the first world championships for the United States. When you enter, what was it like going to that very first world championships in 1989? <laughs> so the, you got to understand the years leading up to that. I, I, everyone still was so negative about girls wrestling. And I got so many um, just negative comments where they, people didn't believe girls should be wrestling and that I should be wrestling. And what do you think girls are doing? And what we don't need is a sideshow. And so all of a sudden to go from, you know, um, locally people having that kind of attitude to all of a sudden now we're allowed to, um, compete at a world championships alongside these amazing male wrestlers who, like I said, growing up in high school, I had their posters on my wall, you know, and, and where m most girls like their, their heroes or their stars are like these actors or singers or whatnot. No, I had like the posters and pictures of, you know, Bruce Baumgartner and Tim Vanny and like, you know, all these amazing, amazing wrestlers, Matt Gaffari and all those guys up on my wall. And then all of a sudden I find myself at the world championships and I'm wrestling under the same roof at the same tournament as them. And so part of that was just so hard for me to process, but I was also in such awe and starstruck that like, am, am I really competing on a mat alongside where they just called John Smith? you know and um and so that was that was really really cool now this is back in 1989 and we still didn't have very much support um and so i remember that very first world championships like usa wrestling was kind enough and they gave us you know warm-ups and but they hadn't made singlets for women still back then you know and so like little things that you think about that luckily you know female wrestlers now, um, they have, you know, Russ Adeline Gray has put on an awesome wrestling shoe that's, you know, for, for women and it fits perfectly. And, but back then we didn't even have, you know, singlets, um, that were made for women. And, um, you know, we didn't have, I mean, luckily Rusty Davidson stepped, stepped up and, um, was our coach that first year in 1989. But, um, you know, he, I, I found out later, he was given a lot of grief. What are you doing coaching women? And don't, don't encourage them, you know? And so there was still that kind of attitude to where any male that supported us, any wrestler that supported us, any coach that supported us, that wasn't the norm. And they were really kind of sticking their neck out for us. And, um, you know, that was kind of the feeling at the time in, in, in the late eighties. And then, to all of a sudden now being able to compete at the world championships, like I said, alongside those big, big role models of mine, big wrestling heroes of mine. Um, it was amazing for me. So at the time when I won that world medal, I never thought that it would make history and become the first, you know, world medal from the, for the United States. I was just thinking, I love wrestling and oh cool, they're letting me wrestle now at the world championships, you know? And, and that was even just big enough. I was trying to wrap my mind around it. And, and it was great because it gave it some legitimacy, right? Like 
I'm, I'm actually wrestling at the world championships and there's referees refereeing the match and it's, it's legitimate and people are actually watching and going, oh yeah, these girls are, okay, they're actually wrestling, you know? And so um, it, it, was, it was a start. We had to start somewhere, right? And so um, I was really fortunate to be there from the very beginning, from the start of it. Did they really give out the most beautiful wrestler award for the women? Absolutely. So I'll tell you what happened, actually. So that was 1989, was the first world championships that we had the women's wrestling. And we had women's wrestling, all three styles, men's freestyle, men's Greco, and women's wrestling were all held together in Martigny, Switzerland, 1989 world championships. So we were all together and they ran it like a great tournament and, and, and it was wonderful and legitimate and awesome start. Well, the following year in 1990, they decided they were going to separate all three styles. So men's freestyle was held at a different country and location. Men's Greco was held at a different venue. And then women's um, wrestling was held in Lulia, Sweden in 1990. So now we have women's wrestling world championships on its own. That's where they first, not only instead of um, <laughs> best wrestler, most valuable wrestler award, instead of that, yes, they gave the, um, the most beautiful wrestler award. And um, the most beautiful wrestler award was given with, with, as a tiara placed on on, on that person's, on that female's head. And that's not even the worst of it. I mean, you'll have to read in the book and, and I mentioned a lot more about it, but um, you know, where they give you your medal and then they usually give you, you know, it, 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 a belt or a trophy or whatnot. Well, in 1990 World Championships, we were given our medal and then we were also given kitchen appliances instead of you know, belts or trophies or whatnot. And so I remember I got this uh, saute pan and Marie Ziegler, my teammate, got this like food processor. <laughs> and we're like, wow, really? You know, here we thought we were finally legitimate and they were looking at us as real wrestlers. And yet now we're being awarded, you know, most beautiful wrestler award and given kitchen appliances. And I know they didn't mean anything by it, but it just... It just tells you where the times were and what people's thinking was at the time. And that was 1990. Well, that's 30 years ago. What do you think has been the biggest contributing factor, the change that we're in? Not the best spot, but we've made so much progress. We have made a lot of progress. And, you know, um, a few things. One, I think, you know, where they say behind every successful man is, you know, a well-driven, successful woman that, that pushes them and to succeed. Well, I think with women's wrestling, first and foremost, I have to really thank the men and the male wrestlers that had the open mind, and they were very few in the very beginning, but had that open mind to convince their other fellow male wrestlers and say, no, watch these women. They actually are wrestlers and they actually do have technique. And yeah, let's help them out instead of laughing at them, you know? And, and there's, there's a part in, this, in, in my book, if you read that where, you know, again, John Smith being one of my, my, my idols and my role models, like even back, back in the eighties was like, hey, I need a workout partner. Come over. Let, 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 me, let me wrestle with you. And he didn't look at me as like, oh, she's a girl. She doesn't belong on the mat, you know? And so those, those male wrestlers that had the open mind and that were able to support us, um, for us to be able to get to where we are today. And we have some amazing male coaches now and amazing support from the wrestling community. And, and hopefully, um, the male, um, wrestlers and population can look and see, okay, there's a whole nother half of population, the women, and, and they love wrestling just as much and, and, and they're passionate about it. And so maybe their history is not as long and they haven't had the support we've had, but let's help them out and let's help grow women's wrestling because women's wrestling is good for men's wrestling. It's good for all wrestling. And so I think, you know, having that mindset shift 
to where a lot of male wrestlers are now more supportive and in support of women and willing to help and coach and, and, and fund programs and, and develop more programs. You know, I think that really helps. And, and of course my hat is off to Terry Steiner. I mean, look at this amazing coach that has been in this position for so long now. I wish he had been, you know, with USA wrestling and part of, um, when I was wrestling, but of course, you know, we're, we're the same age. And so he was competing back when I was competing, but look at all he's done for women's wrestling and from, for our national team and, and progressing the female wrestlers and our women's program within the United States. And, and, and then also who, who I really give kudos to is this next generation of female wrestlers. You know, they've become tougher, stronger, and, are taking the opportunities. You know, I hope that they do learn about their history of women's wrestling and, and people like myself and, and, you know, Trish Saunders and Shannon Williams and Marie Ziegler and Sandy Bacher and, and, you know, women from where it first started and for them to realize um, the history of it and, and, and appreciate the opportunities that they have now and to keep growing the sport, right? Because we've come a long ways, but like, as you said, we still have a ways to go. And so now it's up to these, this next generation, these young girls and, and, and hopefully they can keep wrestling and keep growing the sport in numbers and in technique and in, in everything. And then now, as I see the girls that I coached, now they're retiring and I hope they get into coaching and I'm seeing more of that too. And as we're getting more opportunities to bring women's wrestling in to, you know, NCAA and, and all collegiate wrestling, and hopefully there'll be more coaching positions for women. And um, um, hopefully we can continue to grow women's wrestling more and more and more. So I think it's come a long ways with the help and support of the male wrestlers, but I think we is now really up to us to, to keep it going and keep how, growing. How do we keep it going the next 30 years to make sure that if we have another conversation that it's a lot better than where it was right now? Right. So some of it is, um, again, that mindset changing that, that you know, um, women's wrestling is good for all wrestling and so we need the support of the entire wrestling community it's not just men's wrestling versus women's wrestling right it's all wrestling and so we really need to as a community support each other um <clears throat> and then continue to to build um at the grassroots levels as well you know um get more wrestling programs more coaches um, in clubs throughout the country, allowing and, and encouraging um, sisters of the wrestlers, you know, friends of their wrestlers, uh, opening up and welcoming more um, young girl wrestlers. And then in the school systems, you know, um, really opening up to hopefully funding more programs for um, girls wrestling. I really hope that in high school, we can have all girls wrestling teams so that girls don't have to compete against boys anymore. You know, they can, they can compete alongside like how track has track and field or cross country. You have, you know, the men's team and you have the women's team and the men compete against the men and women compete against women, but they all support each other and they're the one big team. But, um, you know, there's, there's the women's team and the men's team that they support each other. I hope to see that in high school to where, you know, the, the, the boys wrestlers um, wrestle boys and the girl wrestlers wrestle girls. And hopefully we can continue wrestling freestyle. And, but we support each other, but we have all girls programs in high school. And then, now, and then those feed into the college programs, right? And that's really gonna help, I believe, save men's programs as well, so that Title IX doesn't come and, um, you know, end up cutting programs. Um, you know, I mean, as you see Stanford Wrestling, who would have ever thought that yeah, Stanford Wrestling would be cut? And so, you know, but if we have all women's college teams as well, then I think it would help all wrestling and we can not only grow women's wrestling for the next 30 years plus, but we can strengthen 
all wrestling, our sport as a whole. I mean, I'm sure you remember 2012, where our sport was cut from the Olympics, right? Who would have had imagined that? But, you know, again, shame, us, shame on us as a community, as wrestlers, for not doing more. And, and, and I think we need to do more in spreading and familiarizing people with our great sport. And, um, and you know, and, and telling our stories. I think wrestlers in the media, we tend to be very humble, very kind of, you know, shy and just not, you know, talk about our sport as much in, in, in the mainstream media. And, and I think we need to do more of that. You know, I think we need to get our sport out there. We need to talk about it. Like, for example, this, this book. Yeah, it's a I'm so excited and thrilled about my book. And it and it talks a lot about wrestling and it is a wrestling book, but it's a wrestling book that I can you know, hopefully give to the school system and the general population. And not only will they become more familiar with wrestling and female wrestling, like I remember people asking me, oh, there's girls wrestling, girls wrestle, you know, from those days. And believe it or not, I heard that the other day and I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm still hearing that from people outside of the wrestling community, like the general public, oh, there's girls wrestling. Like we shouldn't be hearing that anymore, you know? And so hopefully with getting more maybe wrestling movies, more wrestling books, getting wrestling more in, in the mainstream media. Um, I think it'll really help our sport um, as a whole. Very important read. There's the book again. I think everyone should pick it up and read it. There's so much insight there just for anyone to learn about wrestling and your story. But I appreciate this time and make sure you plug where you can get it if people want to order it. Yes, absolutely. So we tried to make it easy and um, to, to mem mem remember, but it's www.afsoonwrestling, all one word, afsoonwrestling.com. So yeah, www.afsoonwrestling.com. And um, yeah, if you want to send me a private message, I can, I can sign it for you, but I would love to get this book in the hands of all readers. <laughs>